Telegram ni ngulele ko. Hambo isol. Hambo isol. So this thing of winning souls. It starts by you yourself. You must act saved. Otherwise you can't save others. Your behavior should say you are saved. I can't convince others to be saved. If if I am still doing nonsense. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. So my lifestyle must reflect Jesus. You are the first Jesus that someone will see. Before you introduce them to the real Jesus. You are the first one they will see. So before we even start talking about you bringing people to Christ. How do you treat people? Do you treat people in a way that creates a barrier between you and God? Between them and God? You are the conduit that God is using to bring people to him. Is your attitude blocking people from being saved? And they say, if this is the God that you want to introduce me to, the God that makes you behave like this, keep your God. Can I tell you what the Holy Spirit is saying to me right now? He is saying there is somebody who you have not forgiven that you need to bring to Christ. But that grudge is standing between that person and salvation. What is it that was done to you that was so bad that you can't forgive so as to allow yourself to introduce Jesus and bring that person into redemption? You see, if we say, if, if I ask someone and say, tell me uh, somebody who you believe is a star, they will tell you Beyonce is a star. Hello? Right? They will tell you Lionel Messi is a star. Ronaldo is a star. Usain Bolt is a star. Hello? But how many know that those people's season of being a star can come to an end. Nobody talks about Pele much. They now talk about Lionel Messi. Because Pele expired. His season of being a star expired. Michael Jackson was one of the greatest stars to have ever lived. Michael Jackson but his season expired. But your Bible, God al Bible lako. In Daniel 11. Good Daniel 11. <laughs> round about verse number three. Put it up there for me. Legbo verse three. He says, if you win souls, listen now, Zosa in perfumo. You will be a star forever. We are kama pagate na pagate. Put it up there. Chapter 2 of verse 3. He says, as far as heaven is concerned, a soul winner becomes a permanent star. Hey! In other words, you will never fade. This is what the soul winning assignment can do. Those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. And those who turn many to righteousness, they shall be stars forever. Forever. 
Forever. It means that you will never have a season where they say this one has expired. The path of the just shines more and more until the perfect day. How do I cause my, 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 my star to shine more and more? Continue to win souls. Continue to win souls. Continue to win souls. God said to me, He said, Tell your sons who are in business. For every soul, they win for me. I will give them a new contract. One soul. One contract. One soul. One contract. One contract. He said, tell my children, for every soul that they win for me, I will add a year of life. Do you understand? Do you understand? I will add a year of life. Because if the whole of heaven rejoices because of one soul I bring to Christ, Imagine what heaven would do for me. I I I am so passionate about souls now. Because God opened my eyes. He said to me, if you go and see now uh, you know those people who do financial management, wealth, wealth creation, wealth management. You know those people. If you go and sit down with them, and you want to put some money on the stock exchange, what is the question you ask? The question you ask is which is the highest yielding stock? Am I right? Am I right? No one invests in the lowest yielding stock. So, 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 so they will tell you to invest in old mutual. They will tell you to invest in Delta. These names are familiar, right? right? I mean, that's, 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 that's your job, really. Yeah. So they'll, they, they'll tell you the stocks that you can invest in that will produce maximum yields. And God said to me, soul winning is the highest yielding stock in the kingdom. I wish someone would catch this message. Soul winning is the highest yielding stock in the kingdom. If you trade that stock, you'll be a financial star forever. You'll be a financial star forever. There are many platforms on which to give. Good platforms. It's good to give to your parents. And you must give. To to your it's, good to, it's good to give to the poor. And you must give the poor. It's very important that you reach out your hand to the poor. The Bible says, He that gives to the poor lends to God. It's good to give to the widows. It's all powerful. But nothing gives results or has guaranteed results like giving for so winning. Nothing brings results in your finances like so winning. Funding so winning. Nothing. Good. Because when I put my money in soul winning. I am putting my money in the heartbeat of God. In the heartbeat of God. I'm advancing what matters to God. Do you know if, if, if I really want to touch the heart of Apostle Justice? Where is is working somewhere? If I want to touch the heart of this man, 
Do you know what I do? Can I, can I, can I give you this principle? If I want to touch the heart of this man, please open my bag. If I want to touch the heart of this man, If I want to touch the heart of this man, I invest in his son. Because And without even talking to him, I have moved his heart. Because he says, you love me enough to invest in what I love. Oh, you are not understanding. There are potential children of God out there that can only come here via your investment. God is up in heaven. He's looking down on earth and saying, I wish there was a crusade in this particular village because I have my sons and daughters that I love them. The Bible says, while we are yet sinners, so God loves sinners. But the sinner cannot be reconciled with God unless somebody invests until somebody makes a decision and says, I'm going to invest some money for a crusade to take place in a remote village so that God can be reconciled with his children. Never mind the harvest. Never um, mind the harvest. Um, Just being used to, to, to reconcile people with God. Just to be, to be used to finance this dear servant of God and send him out to the village to preach. Because you can preach. You yourself, you can't preach. If we give you this microphone, you'll stammer. But if we give him the microphone, God has gifted him. He has deposited something in him. That even, with, even without preparing, I'm not saying he doesn't prepare. Even without preparing, God knows how to talk to him and whisper in his ear and say, say this to this one. Say this to them. He, he can talk to them in a language they understand. But the person who will have financed is you. So actually, give, give me the name of a remote village. Shooting. Okay. Shooting. Let's say somebody in that remote village. You don't know them. So when you are putting money in the hands of apostle here, and say, men of God go and preach. Actually, the one you are not investing in is not him. Is this one who is lost in that village? What is between? This person's salvation and God is the money 
You are keeping it in your hands. Just so you can look at figures. And be impressed with figures. Ask your neighbor, what figures? Are you looking at in your account? And saying, I can't let this go. Not even in exchange for a soul. Which God said the value of the whole world put together is no comparison for this one soul. Even if we do a crusade in one village and we get one soul, it is worth the investment of half a million rands. It is worth one it. One village, one soul, half a million. million. It's worth it. God said to me, now you're talking. He said, now you're talking. He says, I was waiting for this day so I could bless you. I was waiting for this thing. Apostle, I was waiting for an S class for five years. The so long S class five years. But within less than three months of catching this message, do, do you know you can know a message and not catch it? <laughs> you can know it and not know it. You, you, you can know that it's good to win souls. But not to understand the power of financing soul winning. The heartbeat of God. God's biggest agenda on planet Earth. is proof of gratitude. It's not even giving. It's just proof of gratitude. It's saying, thank you, Lord, 10%. percent i saying you are the one who did it. In fact, the tithe is not even yours to give. The tithe belongs to God, so it's not even yours. In fact, God is actually shocked when you don't tithe. He's not impressed when you tithe. But he's shocked when you don't do it. That, that, that is for Sunday. Let's leave that one alone. <laughs> God is shocked when you consume your tithe. He's shocked. That you have the guts to eat my money. I, I just allowed it to pass through your account on its way to worship center. And you have the audacity, the Guts to eat something I said is mine. Ah, he's shocked. <laughs> he's shocked. He's shocked. He's shocked. He's shocked. He's surprised. He says, you, 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 you eat, but Oga, Uta lo You eat by tithe. Uta we shumwami. Shocked. We are mangal. And you still want to have a conversation with me. It's, it's, like, it's like your neighbor now. <laughs> they, 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 I won't use this one as your husband. You know, this your neighbor. You see them getting into your bag. Taking something out. And you are watching. And they know you are watching. But they still take it. And then after that, they want to have a discussion with you. About what? If you are eating your tithe, stop praying. Stop praying. He's not listening. You can pray all night. He's not listening. Because he says you are a robber. But that's not our discussion today. 
No, you must stop praying. This is my brother. I'm telling you, stop praying. If you're not tithing, stop praying. What are you praying about? To who are you, you praying? Because the one you are praying to, you stole from him already. And you've been stealing for about three years. Now you are praying to the one you Can I tell you proof of in scripture that is shocked? He said, Will a man rob God? Will a man rob a God? Go to your neighbor, go. Go to your neighbor, go. Go to your neighbor, go. Are we here? Score nine. How many are being blessed? How many are understanding? So this man belongs to this God but is in a remote village. God has no way to get to his child without you funding the gospel. This man loves his son. He yearns for him to be reconciled. So, if this God is going to be reconciled, he is going to be reconciled. He is going to be reconciled. He is going to be reconciled. He is going to him to bless someone who to be reconciled. He is going to be reconciled. He is going to be to I mean, just even take Christianity out of it. Does it just not call. even make just normal sense? Ask your neighbor, why should God bless you? Do you know what he said? He took his commission. Mark chapter 10. Open your Bible. I want to show you. I'll show you a few scriptures and I'll close. As well as Mark chapter 10. How many are understanding this thing now? Mark chapter 10. Verse 39. If you understand this, you will never withhold from the gospel. You will never withhold from the gospel. Men of God, all the flyers in our church, the, pro the promotional material, the flyers, the, the adverts, the adverts, Myself and my wife, we pay for them ourselves. Because poverty does not care if you're a bishop. It will still discipline you if you're not a giver. Poverty will discipline you if you're not a giver. Can you write this down? You will never be truly rich until your money is found in outreach. You will never be truly rich until you invest in outreach. You will never be truly rich until you invest in outreach. This that that apostle was, 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 was doing here. Just that 30 minutes. Played repeatedly on television. Will bring millions to Christ. Millions. It, it doesn't have to be long. Just that, just that moving 30 minutes. Will break the heart of a womanizer. 
Take the heart of a drunkard. And he will say, I want that Jesus. That I is talking about. About. But somebody needs to finance it. God God somebody needs to finance it. The TV station will not just play it because it's a nice message. They need someone to pay for it. Are you here? Lift up your right hand. Say God. You can use me. To win souls. You can use me. To win souls. You can use me. As a conduit. To win souls. You can give the church. Resources. Through me. You can trust me. I will get it to your house. So that souls. Can be saved. I refuse. For more people to die without hearing the good news of Jesus when I can finance it. Clap your hands for Jesus. All this means nothing if I can't prove it by scripture. I'll show you from the scriptures and then we'll close. We'll close for the break. Is that okay? 20 minutes. I'll tie, it up. I'll tie it all up in 20 minutes. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Put it there. Verse 27. God has overhauled your mind. Concerning this subject, He has overhauled your mind. Apostle, Apostle, there's a young man in my church. I think he's been with us for about eight months or so, gift. So about, eight, about eight months. He was working on a lot of contracts. Construction, quotation after quotation, proposal, this, 3D impressions, none of it being approved. One day under the anointing, the Holy Spirit said to me, tell him to give the car that he came into church for the sake of soul winning. So I can show him what I've been wanting to do all this time. I told him to stand up in church. I said, whatever car keys you have, bring them. Let's give it to God now. He wants to do something. Some people would backslide immediately and leave, collect the car keys and leave the church immediately. He had bought it the day before. I didn't know. He, the Lord just said whatever car he bought, he, he, bought he brought to church. He could have said I didn't come with a car. I would have left. Have it but God said car. that car that you came into church with, leave it. And He said, sell that car. Put the money into so winning. I took the car. We sold it. I think about it was not much. It was maybe about uh, fifty thousand rand. Yeah. Not much. This young man. To date, and now we are his business partners. Because he says, No, where I'm going, I need you, men of God. To be I my need partner. the grace. He's sitting on, there's a contract for 5.5 million. Which is, this is US dollars, which is approved. He phoned me last night. There's something, something for two, about three million. Rand, 3 million rand which is being paid on Tuesday he called me this morning he said oh apostle we because I'm now also his partner he said we we, we have won another contract for 1.4 million and also we have received some land 
to build a school and a service station. And this he did about three months ago. So willing. So willing. So willing. So willing. So willing. Is the key to unlock your dreams. A friend of mine came to my house. We we're negotiating some, some, some property that we want to buy from him for two million US dollars. The house is not even a commercial building, just a house. So you went to show me a few other things that we want to do. So he dropped me at my house. When the electric gate opened. And he saw what God has done. 